lecture, uh, we shall be discussing the design of counters, specifically a kind of counter which is called ripple counter. And so, we shall be explaining the definition of ripple counter in due course of time. So, the title of this lecture is design of counters part 1. Okay. The kind of counters that we are considering here is the binary counter. So, what do you mean by a binary counter? First thing is that the binary counter will be designed using a set of flip flops whose states change in response to pulses applied at the input. Like you say if I have a counter this is my counter and I am applying some pulses in the input. Well, we can call it clock, we can call it anything else some pulses are coming, some pulses are coming in the input and this counter is supposed to count how many pulses have come. The combined state of the flip flop for example, if this is a 4 bit counter, so in the output I will be having a 4 bit number coming out. This I refer to as the combined state of the flip flops, this will be the binary equivalent of the total number of pulses that have been applied. Like if it is 4 bit it will start with 0, then 1, then 2, then 3 and so on. This is what a binary counter essentially is right. Okay. Talking about the types of counters broadly speaking counters can be either asynchronous or synchronous. Let us try to see the differences between these two first. First asynchronous counter, this kind of counter is sometimes also referred to as ripple counter. Now, let us explain why we call it ripple counter and why is it asynchronous, okay. because earlier if you recall we had uh, encountered this term ripple in the context of the design of adders, ripple carry adder. In a ripple carry adder if you recall the carries were propagating from one full adder stage to the next, that is what we refer to as a rippling effect. Here also there is a similar rippling effect that will come in that we shall see how. The first thing is that this kind of asynchronous or ripple counter are the easiest to design, they are the simplest, they require the minimum amount of hardware for implementation. Let us see how it will, uh, this can be designed. Uh, now, let us try to explain these two terms asynchronous and ripple. So, we call this kind of counter asynchronous, because the flip flops it can be a 4 bit counter there will be 4 flip flops. The flip flops are not driven by the same clock unlike a register. Now, in a register design if you recall all the flip flops were driven by the same clock signal, but in an asynchronous counter we are not using the same clock to drive the flip flops, which means the flip flops are not changing their states at the same time, they are not synchronous. So, asynchronous means not synchronous okay. and these kind of counters you shall see why are very conveniently designed using T flip flops. Next let us see why they are called ripple counters. See here let us take an example that for a 4 bit counter the current state is 1111, 1111 means 15 right, 1111 means 15. Now, if another clock pulse comes the count is supposed to be 16, but in 4 bits you can only store a maximum of 15. So, if another pulse comes it will again reset to 0, so 15 you will again go back to 0. So, 1111 to 0000. 
Now, in a ripple counter what happens is that this four flip flops will not change state simultaneously. So, what will happen? The first flip flop will change state first, then the second flip flop will change state, then the third will change state, then the last one will change state. So, this was the initial state, this was the final state and there are three intermediate or temporary states. So, when you apply a clock pulse or some signal in the input, the flip flops will not change state simultaneously. There will be a rippling effect, the first flip flop will change, that will cause the second flip flop to change, that will cause the third one to change, which will cause the fourth one to change. So, this is something similar to that rippling effect that I talked about, this is why it is called a ripple counter. Now, the problem in such ripple counter is that this as you can see that the transition from 1111 to 0000 is not smooth. There are some intermediate glitches or pulses that might come in between. So, if the output of the counter is driving some other circuit, this unwanted transition may cause some errors because of these glitches. But if such glitches are not really a problem, then you can use this kind of a counter because designing this kind of a counter is very simple, right. This is asynchronous counter. Now, in contrast, a synchronous counter is characterized by the fact that you have the same clock signal that is feeding all the flip flops. And because the same clock signal is feeding the flip flops, whenever the active edge of the clock comes, all the flip flops will change state simultaneously. Those intermediate states that I have just now mentioned for ripple counter, they will not come. Okay. So, all flip flops change state simultaneously, which means no glitches in the outputs. Such counters are typically faster than asynchronous counter, because there is no rippling effect. But the drawback is that it needs more hardware. Now, we already know how to design a synchronous counter, we, we have already seen it earlier. When you talked about the formal design procedure for FSMs, we took an example of counter design also. So, when you want to design a synchronous counter, that is the way to go about it. You start with a state transition diagram or a state table, go through the steps and finally, arrive at the design using your chosen flip flop, it can be T flip flop, S R, J K, D. Okay. So, as I said this kind of counters can be designed using the methodology which we have discussed earlier. Fine. Now, here we are concerned about the design of ripple counters or asynchronous counter. Let us look at a 4 bit ripple counter which counts up means 0 1 2 3 4 up to 15 and then again back to 0 1 2 3. Now, we make an interesting observation here which will help us in deciding how to design this kind of a counter. The observation is as follows, during counting whenever a bit position changes from 1 to 0, the next higher bit position will change state. Let us try to explain this with this sequence of counting. So, I am showing the decimal values 0 up to 15 and the corresponding binary values. Now, I let me try to validate this, whenever a bit position changes from 1 to 0, I look at the least significant thing. See 1 to 0, there is, a, there is a change here, 1 to 0, there is another change here, 1 to 0, then again this 1 to 0 here, 1 to 0, 1 to 0, 1 to 0. Now, see whenever there is a 1 to 0 change, the next higher bit also changes, it was 0, it becomes 1, here 
it was 1 it has become 0, it was 0 it has become 1, this is changing, this is changing, this is changing, this is changing and so on. Right? So, whenever there is a change in one stage when the bit goes from 1 to 0, the next higher bit position changes state. So, let us verify for the next position. In the next position, a 1 to 0 transition is coming here, next it is coming here, next it is coming here and the final one is coming here 1 to 0. You verify 1 to 0, so the next higher bit is changing to 0 it has become 1. Then here this bit is changing, it was 1 it has become 0, here this bit is changing it was 0 it has become 1 and here also it was 1 it has become 0. So, this is true for all the bit positions and this is a very interesting characteristics of this counting process in binary. Now, because of this means we can have a very intuitive method of designing this kind of a counter. Now, you think of a T flip flop, suppose I have a T flip flop which is triggered by the negative edge of the clock. So, whenever, whenever there is a 1 to 0 transition in the clock, the flip flop will change state. So, exactly the same behavior is captured in this table, right. So, whenever there is a change from 1 to 0, the next state is supposed to change. So, if the output of one stage I connect to the clock input of the next stage, that will make my counter very simple. So, what we are saying is that this feature can be directly mapped into a T flip flop circuit with negative edge triggered clock. Let us see how the counter will look like, the counter will look like this. This is a 4 bit binary counter, I use 4 T flip flops, where the T inputs are permanently set to 1, which means whenever there is a clock the flip flop will toggle, it will change state. So, the input clock is fed only to the first flip flop, this is your least significant bit LSB and the rightmost one is your most significant bit. The output of the first flip flop is connected to the clock of the second flip flop, output Q 1 is connected to the clock here and output Q 2 is connected to the clock here. So, that whenever there is a 1 to 0 transition here, this flip flop will change state, whenever there is a 1 to 0 transition here, this flip flop will change state and so on, right. This will continue to happen. This is how a simple binary up counter can be designed, just connect a number of T flip flops in cascade, which are triggered by the negative edge of the clock. Now, one point to note is that suppose instead of negative edge triggered I have positive edge triggered T flip flop, then what do we have to do, which means these are not negative edge triggered, these are positive edge triggered. So, what I will do only change is that I will be taking the Q 0 bar output and I will be connecting this here, I will take the Q 1 bar output. I will be connecting it here and so on, q 2 bar I will be connecting here. We simply connect the complement output of the stage to the clock input of the next stage, because if q 0 change from 1 to 0, q 0 bar will change from 0 to 1 and this is this is a positive edge triggered T flip flop, this will also work, right. Now, let us work out the timing diagram for this example. Well, here for the time being I am ignoring the delays. So, I am assuming that all changes are happening simultaneously. Let us assume initially q 0, q 1, q 2, q 3 they are all in the 0 state 0, 0, 0, 0 and clock is coming the active edge of the clock is shown in red, the falling edge, 
So, whenever there is a falling edge clock is connected to D 0. So, Q 0 will change state. First let me draw Q 0 again at the next falling edge Q 0 will again change state again falling edge change state this will continue. So, Q 0 will become like this. Let us look at q 1, this q 0 output is fed to the d 1 is fed to the clock input of the next flip flop. So, whenever there is a falling edge in q 0 this edges q 1 will change state. So, q 1 will change here again it will change here again it will change here again it will change here here and again here. Similarly, for q 2, q 2 will change here. So, whenever there is a falling edge in q 1, next it will change here, next it will change here and so on. And finally, q 3 will change here. And so, whenever there is a falling edge. Just if you see it is 0, 0, 0, 1, next it will be 1, 0, 0, 0. So, it is exactly counting in binary, next it will be uh, 0, 1, 0, 0, then 1, 1, 0, 0. So, you look at it 0, 0, 0, 0 is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 is 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 3. So, like this it will go on, this will be 4, 0, 1, 0, 0 this will be 5 right. So, in this way this will go on fine. <coughs> now, there is an interesting observation from the truth table or actually from from the from the timing diagram that we have shown just if you recall the input clock was coming the output q 0 was changing at the falling edge of the clock that means, it was something like this the clock was like this coming and q 0 was changing at the falling edge of the clock. So, one thing you can say if the frequency of the input signal was f the frequency of the q 0 output will be f by 2 because for every 2 pulses of f you are getting 1 pulse of of q 0. So, at q 0 the frequency will be getting divided by 2. Similarly, at q 1 with respect to q 0 again divide by 2. So, it will be f by 4 at q 2 it will be f by 8 at q 3 it will be f by 16. So, a binary counter can be very nicely used for dividing the input frequency by some power of 2 this is one interesting characteristic. Now, another point also to note suppose my input clock is like this means it is not square it is something like this very narrow pulses are coming. But if you look at the q 0 output at the falling edge it will be changing state. So, whatever you get it is a perfectly square wave. the on period and the off period will be exactly equal. So, from the output of the counter the wave the signals that you get they will be perfect square waves on period and off periods are equal. So, whenever you require such a kind of a signal you can use a flip flop or a counter to generate such square waves right these are two observations. So, at n bit binary counter in general this was a 4 bit counter you divide by 16. So, for an n bit counter you can divide by 2 to the power n and such a counter is called a modulo 2 to the power n counter. Now, one observation we have not discussed yet I mentioned in the beginning that whenever a ripple counter is counting there will be some intermediate transient states because all the flip flops are not changing state simultaneously there will be some delay. Okay. 
So, here I am showing the real state transition diagram of a ripple counter where the blue states are the permanent states and the pink marked states are the temporary states. Like whenever a single bit is changing like from 0 0 0 to 0 0 1 it is going directly, but 0 0 1 to 0 1 0 there are two bits which are changing. So, here the first bit will be changing first then the second bit will be changing. 0 1 1 to 1 0 0 all the three bits are changing. So, first the LSB will change, next LSB will change, then the most significant bit will change. Similarly, 1 0 1 to 1 1 0, similarly 1 1 1 to 0 0 0, first bit will change, second bit will change, third bit will change. Now, let us see how it or mean how many it works. Let us try to illustrate it for this state. 0 1 1 to 1 0 0 right. Let us look at this 0 1 1 to 1 0 0 state. So, let me just show you the timing diagram to explain why this happens. This is the falling edge. I just I am showing one clock only because this uh, these are the three outputs q 0, q 1 and q 2. The state was 0 1 1. So, q 2 was 0, q 1 was 1, q 0 was 1, 0, 1, 1. Now, an active edge of the clock has come. Now, what will happen you see? each flip flop will have a delay. So, I am showing the timing diagram with the delay here, because earlier I have ignored the delay in this timing diagram that I drawn. So, q 0 will change after a short delay like this and this q 0 will be fed to the t input uh, to the to the clock input of the next flip flop. So, q 1 will change now after again a little delay sorry. So, this will remain like this and q 2 will change again after some delay. So, you see the intermediate states out here the state was 0 Uh, it was 0 1 1, 0 1 1 was initial of course, it was 0 1 1. Then look at the state after this here, it was 0 1 and 0, it became 0 1 0. Then look at the state here, it became uh, 0 1 1 to 0 1 0 then it became 0 0 0. So, and finally, out here it became 1 0 0. So, these 0 1 0 and 0 0 0 these are intermediate states that are being generated 0 1 1 was the initial state 1 0 0 is the final state and this intermediate states are being generated and these are happening because of the delays of the flip flops right. Okay. So, uh, this is what we mean by there are transient states during the counting. Now, if you want to design a down counter the observation is very similar, but the direction of the changes are just reverse. So, whenever a bit position changes from 0 to 1, then the next higher position change, changes state. If you are counting down, let us say sometimes we need a counter to count down 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 like that. This is called a down counter. Suppose we want to design a down counter. So, it will start from 15 for a 4 bit counter 14, 13 down to 0 and again back to 15. So, whenever there is a this 1 to 0 transition, I am showing some examples. 
not 1 to 0, 0 to 1 here, 0 to 1 transition, the next bit is changing. Let us say here also 0 to 1 transition, next bit is changing. And so, here also you say 0 to 1 transition, 0 to 1 transition, the next bit is changing, it has 1, it has become 0. So, just the polarity is reverse, otherwise there is no basic change. So, to implement this, you can use a T flip clock earlier, we use negative H triggered clock, but here you require positive H triggered clock. So, whenever there is a change from 0 to 1, then the flip flop should toggle, right? And this is the requirement. So, to summarize, so if you use negative edge triggered flip flop, then we will have to connect q bar output to the clock input of next stage, but if you use positive edge triggered flip flop, then you can directly connect the q output to the clock input. This will result in a down counter. So, with this we come to the end of this lecture. Now, in the next lecture we shall be continuing with our discussion on counters, we shall be seeing some other issues with respect to counter design and we shall be talking about general counter designs, not necessarily some counter which is counting up to some power of 2 and then going to 0 and this we shall be discussing in the next lecture. Thank you.